What's up guys, this is The Wolf here. Welcome back to The Wolf's Den. If you're new to the channel, this is my weekly podcast where we go over gaming and movie related content that happened throughout the week. There hasn't been too much. Um, I did try to make a couple videos this week, even though it's it's been my uh, my weekend, birthday, however you want to say it. We, we went out to dinner, did the whole shebang, all that good stuff. So I didn't really have a lot of time to allocate two videos, but I tried to get them out there. Um, there isn't much to talk about though. I mean, there is some stuff like we have a uh, we have Halo Infinite news, Battlefield 2042, a couple reviews uh, to go over, and I, I do want to talk about The Witcher. We have an update on The Witcher remake and The Witcher 4, and then we're gonna end the show off with uh, some PlayStation discussions. So that should be fun. Uh, so let's just get into it with the short, the shortest news story. Uh, the Witcher remake is coming after The Witcher 4. According to CD Projekt Red, uh, it's planned to be open world instead of linear, so that's all good news. We just have no idea when The Witcher 4 is coming out, which is just, it makes so many questions go up in the air. Like, if The Witcher 4 comes out in 2024 or 2025, then that means The Witcher remake is probably like 2026, 2027. So that's just, it's just crazy to think about how long game development is compared to back when... You know, I was in high school when games were like two year development cycles, it felt like, you know, so now it's like six. It's just nuts. It's crazy to think about, but I can't wait. I, I'm i also going to pick up the, well, I, I have The Witcher 3, but I'm going to install that free next gen update because I never finished it. I think I was in college when I was, I was playing it and it was like, I got 50 hours in, barely even got through the story, I feel like. So I, it'd be cool to go back to that and, and finish it up, but can't wait can't wait for all this news um i'm much more of a witcher fan than i am the cd project or not cd project um cyberpunk 20 uh 2077 can't fucking talk um i didn't have many issues with with cyberpunk but i know the community themselves is a lot on pc just broken gameplay you know so i don't know i just i feel like we need to stop forgiving these developers and publishers i don't understand why we do like, it's been two years and people are already like, when's the next Cyberpunk happening? And it's like, bro, <laughs> what the fuck? Did you not forget or did you not remember that they just put out a piece of shit because you wanted them to rush it so much? Like, it's it's ridiculous what people are. It's just, I get it, but damn, like, it just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, let's get into this. Uh, these two FPS giants and their issues. So Halo Infinite multiplayer. Their creative director has left. That's uh, not shocking. It isn't shocking at all. I just, I, I don't know. I had the most faith in Halo Infinite because the gameplay was good. It just needed content. And they just, they, they just like, one after another. They're like, no split screen co-op. No this, none of this. This is not going to happen. It's like, bro, <laughs> you're killing your own game. You know? Self-mutilation. Doesn't make sense. You know that I think my biggest problem with Halo Infinite because I really didn't I didn't notice any hackers or cheaters I might have just not noticed but the main problem I had was that I was always in lobbies either you know every other match or sometimes back to back to back I would be in this battle rifle lobby and I suck with battle rifles and it just it makes the gameplay drag like every fucking match I'm like dude I don't want to play with this fucking battle rifle like give me a playlist where I can just go in without a fucking battle rifle. Why is that such a why is that such a problem? You know, I don't understand it. You know, 20 years of playing Halo, I suck with the battle rifle. I know I do. I do not want to play with it. And then when every match is a fucking battle rifle match, I just cannot stand it. And I just I quit playing. You know, it's still on my Xbox. I just never fucking play it. Every time I play it, it's fucking ass. <laughs> you know, I, I, it's very frustrating. But. Um, I don't know. We're, we're just gonna have to see where Halo goes because I don't know what the fuck the future holds for Halo Infinite. Um, but as as for Battlefield 2042, it hit Game Pass, which I just got a thought actually in my head that, you know, so Halo Infinite's on Game Pass, Battlefield is on Game Pass, and if they get Call of Duty and that goes to Game Pass, you have the major big three FPS giants all on Game Pass. That's just insane. Um, never really thought about it I, I heard battlefield 2042 might head to game pass 
and I never made that connection. I'm like, shit, it's every one of them. That's nuts. That is really crazy. But this is just embarrassing. Like, I was I was looking at some interview, and I think it was either Dice or EA saying that they feel really good right now after after a year in. And I'm like, how do you feel good right now? <laughs> how do you feel? And like, why can't they just be honest? You know, just be honest. We fucked up. We really fucked up. EA sucks. You know, say something. Someone just, like, you know how, like, a creative director leaves? Why don't the creative director of Battlefield just, you know, just be real? Even even if he gets fired, just be like, yeah, they suck. They really suck. They're a terrible publishing company. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. They just want to cut corners and release shit. And that is what we deal with. They have the, the IP. We can't leave. We love Battlefield. It's our baby. Like, say something fucking real. Don't just... Yeah, we feel really comfortable with where we're at right now after a fucking year of being stupid. He's like, bitch. Ugh. <laughs> it's so fucking irritating. It's so frustrating. If you go to Game Pass and you're like a major franchise and you go to Game Pass after a year, you you failed. You fucking failed, bro. You really did. You, you didn't do what we wanted. You know, and I, I have two experiences with Battlefield 2042 because I got it on PS4 when it launched and it was completely broken, unplayable, fucking the frame rate, the the pop-ins, everything was nuts. They had uh, they had those, what you call it, flying up the side of the skyscrapers. It was just, it was broken, like really, really bad. Didn't even play it. I think I played maybe like an hour and I uninstalled it. <laughs> There's no campaign. The portal mode. I went into the portal mode uh, just thinking maybe, you know, I can go back to Bad Company 2 and it, it, it can, you know, I can wait it out, you know, and there was no hit detection with the chopper gunners and I'm like, this is, this is really, really bad. This is sad. This is like depressingly bad. You know, this isn't just a bad launch. This is like, it's broken. It's like completely and utter shit. <laughs> and then about eight months later, after I had a PS5 for a little bit, I picked it up to to see if uh, if it got any better, and it did. You know, the the frame rate and everything. The PS5 obviously can take it a little bit easier than the PS4, but uh, no voice chat, no scoreboard. What the fuck? What what's going on with that? You know. So I, I only played maybe like five hours, and I uninstalled it. Now it's headed to Game Pass, and I might install it again. I heard they they put the class systems back in. I just I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna. I don't. I just don't want to install it over and over again on my PlayStation Five. I only have so much space. That's what I mainly play on. My Xbox has a handful of shit, so I'll just leave it on there. You know, and it's just sad to say that. It's just <laughs> like it's Battlefield. I grew up with Battlefield. You know, back in high school, Battlefield Bad Company. Battlefield Bad Company 2, Battlefield 3, they were all hits. Battlefield 4, even. Even Battlefield 5. <laughs> Which I know a lot of people were kind of mixed on that, but I had fun on it. You know, I, I just didn't like Battlefield 1's setting. You know, but the game was solid. I just don't know what the fuck happened here. I really don't. It's crazy. But, uh, anyway, let's get into these two reviews. I'm going to go over the first one. Because I don't really, I don't own it, so I can't. I'm not going to speak too much on it. But uh, Need for Speed Unbound is getting like five out of ten reviews, uh, six out of tens, you know, and uh, that's 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 pretty crazy. I, the last couple have been like sevens, I, I believe. We could actually check that right now. Let's look. Go to Metacritic and check what Need for Speed is, because I'm curious. Uh, yeah, like Need for Speed Hot Pursuit got a 77. Need for Speed Heat got a 72. Payback got 61. Um, is there any other ones that we can look at? Uh, let's see. Uh, so yeah, even the even the really bad one everybody hated, the 2015, just the title Need for Speed uh, was 66. Need for Speed Rivals was 80. People really liked that one. I did too, actually. Um, so yeah, this that's that's really crazy. Where is the new one? Need for Speed Unbound. That should be on there, shouldn't it? Oh, well, then what the fuck? <laughs> The meta score on Need for Speed Unbound is an 80, so 
The user score is 7.8. Seems like people have... Uh, uh, now I just don't understand this. This dude rated it a 0 out of 10 and said it's awesome. And like he didn't say anything bad about it. That's weird. Um, so maybe it is good. I have no idea. Um... <laughs> uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't imagine. I mean, they said they're doubling down on the next gen because of how much more you can do with the hardware. That's why it's not on PS4 and Xbox One. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I, th I thought it looked pretty good. I just wasn't a super big fan of the cartoony aspect, but you can turn it off. So, I don't know. I, th I thought it was uh, interesting. Um, but the Callisto Protocol is what I really want to talk about. That should be the gameplay that you're seeing. I know I, I really don't know how to do live streaming yet i'm not a good i'm not the best commentator you know i just it's really awkward for me just to occasionally speak while you know people are watching a game i might as well just have a silent playthrough that's what i've been doing so i'm just i'm i'm using that gameplay from the live stream for the podcast you know so that's that's what i'm doing but the callisto protocol i've been i've been really like sitting on this it's, it's been it's been you know festering in my head the game is it's no dead space which is sad which is what i thought it was going to be i thought it was going to be going into the callisto protocol i thought it was going to be the next generation of dead space you know that's what i really thought you know that's, that's i was wrong i was really wrong <laughs> Because, you know, I can, I'm, I did the whole Dead Space remake versus the Callisto Protocol bit. And I'm like, you know, Dead Space is pretty much just going to be nostalgia. It's going to be Dead Space all over again. But the Callisto Protocol, it has potential. It has potential. It looks like it has a deep story. No, it doesn't. <laughs> looks like the gameplay is better. No, it isn't. You know, I, it, it's just like everything I thought about this game did not come to fruition it's it's not it's it's not what i wanted um there are some problems with the game now uh, let me go in and just talk about the the pros real quick so the, the graphics are phenomenal the, you cannot ignore the graphics they're top notch unreal engine greatness you know sometimes i'm just stuck looking at things in the world i'm like oh my god they're looking at the the faces the facial animations everything is amazing but my biggest gripes with the game, obviously the controversial dodge mechanic, that is very, very frustrating. I had to turn on the dodge assist just to just to have fun, because it's just batshit how it works. It does not fucking function the way you would imagine, and it doesn't even work like how they told you in the tutorial. Like I I was thinking, you know, you have like if if the enemy's right hand is coming at you you have to move the stick to the left and if vice versa it's not that at all you just have to move the stick and then it'll dodge and I don't know it's and while you're moving it's kind of a bitch to try to get through it so I just put on the the dodge assist it made it so much better made it smoother it's still a hard as fuck game like with the dodge assist it's still hard on the easiest difficulty it is a hard game but I don't know if they just made that smoother more fluid i think the game would be much better received when it comes to the plot there really isn't much of a plot at all and that's kind of frustrating because i i was curious where they were going to take this because i know dead space had a real deep uh event horizon kind of plot line going on and then this is just they don't really talk like i'm i'm more than halfway through i think and they really don't talk about jack fuck other than you know that they're monsters and they're evolving but you don't know what they are etc you know but the game starts out you don't know who this jacob dude is you don't know why he's involved in all of this shit it's just it's just kind of just a clusterfuck and it's embarrassing because i i was i was waiting on a good story and then when the game starts off and you see how good the graphics look you're like this is gonna be a really good really good game i cannot wait to get into this and then you get about an hour in and you're like damn like uh this dodging shit this this isn't doing it this is not doing it for me you know and then i think dead space also did the i think they did the the atmosphere better you know because a lot of people are saying that this game has you know the sound and 
just the eeriness of it is amazing and i i don't agree you know maybe if i have a headset on i haven't played with a headset yet but uh it's just not the same as dead space dead space was really dark and gritty just the atmosphere was ominous it was really creepy you know and then you go to this and it's just i don't know it just doesn't hit the same it does not hit this like you know in dead space when you you go in somewhere and then you open the door and something jumps at you and it's unexpected i i have never gotten that in this game there's no i mean there's a couple jump scares occasionally but i don't know this is just a mediocre story you don't even get to see that many characters like you occasionally get to see the characters you know like the the lady from the boys which i thought was going to have much more of a major part in this movie or not movie um video game but apparently she's she's barely in it i'm halfway through and i've seen her like three times and each time has been you know kind of like this scripted not really involved with her kind of like cutscene thing just to drive the the story forward um it's just it's very mediocre you know the gameplay is repetitive as fuck like for example the 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 other thing that i'm i i hate is the mutations okay it's very frustrating when you don't have ammo okay you don't have ammo and you're beating the fuck out of even just one just one you just have one enemy you beat the fuck out of him <laughs> and then he has those little tentacles come out and he starts mutating right you're supposed to shoot the tentacles but if you don't have ammo you're fucked so then you have to literally and i'm on the easiest difficulty so i can only imagine what it'd be like on the max right i hit i counted it i hit him 15 times before he died 15 fucking times 15 15 <laughs> Are you like, dude, if you have four of them, that means you have to hit something over a hundred times. Is that, or close to that's, that's literally fucking insane. That's not good gameplay at all. That's, that's really bad. It's, it's really annoying. Like I'll just corner a motherfucker and just like spam him. And I'm like, this is the fucking Babe Ruth simulator now, bitch. Like God, like, what do you mean? <laughs> What, what how did who who play tested this and was like yeah this is this is right this is cool you know and then if you try to actually fight multiple there's no quick turn so you're just you can't do that you have to kind of like strategically plan and like get them away from each other and it's just this is not it's not fun i don't know why it's just not I, i'm not getting into it it's definitely a six or seven out of ten game where Dead Space was a, a solid 9, you know? So, I, I don't know. This is... It's just depressing. You can obviously see by the gameplay. It's it's frustrating. It can have its moments where it's just a bitch. It, it, like, I'll be on one little bar of health and you have to make every dodge perfect. And it's just... It's a frustrating game. And there's no reward, you know? There's no story development. There's no character development. You'll, you'll see people die that you barely even fucking know. I'm like, what is going on with this game? <laughs> I'm going to try and finish it up tonight, but damn, it's just, it is frustrating. I literally went out and picked up Marvel Midnight Suns because that, that was my, my justification for the Callisto Protocol. I'm like, I don't really know if the Midnight Suns is going to be, I don't like the card thing. And, you know, I was on the fence, you know, Need for Speed Unbound. I was going to wait for a price drop. So didn't really have too many other options i'm like i'll oh, just callisto protocol is the one that is the one you know and now i'm like fuck it is not the one it is definitely not the game for december so i went out and picked up marvel midnight suns so i'm gonna probably play that tonight too i guess I don't, it's just frustrating when a game sucks you know like i feel like the whole internet right now is is mourning and they're like man we all had high hopes for that game and now look at it <laughs> you know it's like a, uh it's like someone from high school that turns into a crackhead you're like oh no oh no you know but i i don't get it i don't get it <sighs> very frustrating uh last i want to talk about is this ps5 and ps6 news so let's just start with the playstation 5 so we're apparently going to be getting a slim model in 2023 and I, 
that's fine honestly it's been three years um i really only see this generation going to about 2026 maybe 2027 and if you know things get really pushed 2028 but um ps5 slim is it's on track i mean hopefully they sell a lot of these uh, these first couple skews until then and hopefully that gets out in the market because it just would suck to to buy a playstation and then the slim comes out you know it's it's kind of it's kind of a messy situation you know but i don't know I'm, I'm glad i got my playstation 5 i'm not needing an upgrade anytime soon it's not like it gets too hot or too loud it's it's, it's big i'll give it that so it'd be nice to get a smaller one but but yeah the ps5 slim is just man it's that's just crazy we're already at a slim model we're already we're pretty much two years in to a like a little bit over so that that's just nuts that we're already thinking about a ps5 slim but then through the recent statement made by sony regarding microsoft's acquisition with activision they have said that you know microsoft gave them an offer to have call of duty for the next um or i don't think they said 10 years i think they said up till 2027 by the time that the uh, Sony Interactive Entertainment's next-gen hardware will be rolling out. So they kind of like semi-confirmed the area, which I mean, we all kind of assumed. I mean, you can obviously assume it's going to be between 2027 and 2029. Like somewhere in there is going to be a new release. So it's just crazy though. Are, like, are we talking about next-gen too early? It's been two years. That would be like talking about a PS4 in... 2008 that's that's crazy you know we didn't get that for five more years so we were just think like i don't think anybody was thinking about that in 2008 we were just enjoying the ps3 you know the ps4 in 2013 nobody was like the ps5 in 2015 <laughs> when nobody was and we're already like yep when's the next gen because this one sucks this one's not it you know what what is the problem why are people already moving on to and the PS6 just doesn't look right to me. You know, the just the 6. I think they need to go Roman numeral with the next one. You know, PS and then kind of do like the Grand Theft Auto 6. Because <laughs> I, I don't like the 6. The PS5 works. PS4, 3, 2, 1, all of them work. But PS6, that looks a little strange to me. I don't know. Is it too early? Is it too early to talk about next gen or is it is it just me? I don't know. I don't know. We also have the, the PlayStation Plus and uh, Game Pass announcements that I kind of want to go over. Uh, there, it isn't too much for me personally, but I think there's a lot of content for, for you guys if you guys haven't played some of these games like the Mass Effect Trilogy and Biomutant are going to PlayStation Plus. I haven't played Biomutant. I have it on PS4 and it's kind of like in my back catalog, so that'd be really cool to just download on my PS5. Um, Game Pass, they got Hello Neighbor. Two, I'm not really too familiar with that one. Uh, High on Life, really hyped for that one. And then they have uh, Hot Wheels Unleashed and the Star Wars Lego Skywalker Saga, which I got those two on, on my PS5. So there really isn't too much for me personally, but if you guys passed on any of these games, they are a steal. The Hot Wheels Unleashed is really fun. Star Wars Lego Skywalker, it was not like, you know, the classics, but it was still nostalgic, you know. But High on Life and... Pretty much just high on life because i'm probably gonna play bio mutant probably sometime next month or a couple months from now when there's nothing to play but high on life um that's a day one i definitely want to see what that one's about uh so yeah yeah that should be interesting anyway guys that's pretty much the show there really isn't too much to talk about this week i mean we could go over the indiana jones and and uh transformers shit, but i'm just gonna leave that for uh, a reaction video because I haven't really, I only watched a couple other people's, like the uh, the Critical Drinker. I watched his on uh, Indiana Jones. Watched a couple things like that, but I haven't watched the trailer. So I might leave that for tomorrow. But, but yeah, let me know in the comments below. What do you guys think? Are, what Game Pass game are you going for? What PlayStation Plus game are you going for? Are you excited for the PlayStation 6 or the PlayStation 5 Slim? 
You know, are you going to go pick up Battlefield 2042 on Game Pass and give it another try? Are you uh, curious where The Witcher is going? You know? And uh, what's your thoughts on Callisto Protocol? Because that's kind of like my main takeaway from this podcast. I want to know what you guys think of the Callisto Protocol. Because it's just, it's been an absolute nightmare for me. You know, obviously you can see the gameplay is frustrating sometimes. Sometimes it's not. But damn, it, it was a letdown. It really was. Anyway, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to join the Wolf Pack. Peace.